What's going on guys, it's Omniarch, and today I want to bring you a brand new video talking about E3. Uh, I figured, you know, um, this is a game channel, I'm totally into like the whole video game thing, gaming technology, all that stuff, uh, and I figured that I could give you guys my opinions on E3 this year, things that I've seen thus far. At the time of recording this, the uh, Nintendo conference is actually currently going on, uh, so I'll talk about that in a little bit, obviously, because I haven't officially seen what they are, uh, you know, announcing, but I will talk about them uh, near the end but we have seen um, the presentations from Xbox uh, from Sony or Microsoft and Sony uh, we've seen the EA presentation Bethesda um, and we've seen a lot of things so far coming out of E3 and I want to talk about the things that I'm most excited about um, personally there hasn't really been that many things that I'm really excited about I know they've announced a ton of games coming out uh, for this next you know for the rest of this year in 2017 as well uh, and we've heard, you know, tons of things about VR and all that stuff. Uh, but personally, you know, I'm not really pulled by the by the VR aspect yet. I mean, I know that um, it's brand new. You know, we're just getting into this this whole VR thing, um, and you know, it's very expensive to get into it. And also, there's not many titles out for it yet. So right now, it's just like an early adopter thing. You know, that some people are really getting into. Personally, I'm not sold on the idea yet, at least at the current price point. You know for like oculus rifts and, and things along those lines um but you know maybe in a year or two maybe i'll be down with the vr scene but currently any news that comes out for vr is not blowing me away um like the concept obviously is awesome i mean i would love to play skyrim vr or something along those lines um naturally obviously <clears throat> but i'm not gonna pay for something along like you know however much it costs i'm not gonna pay for that um so any vr news right now isn't really uh, buzzing you know i don't really care i mean it doesn't really make a difference to my life because I enjoy playing my PS4 on a television, uh, so that changes nothing for me. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, Skylanders with Crash Bandicoot. I know a lot of people, you know, a couple of months ago there was hype about a new uh, Crash Bandicoot game coming for the PS4. There were images that were, I guess, leaked or maybe they were fake. I don't know exactly what the whole deal was with that. Um, but they were floating around Facebook and Twitter and people saying, oh my god, I hope this is real, like this would be amazing, all this stuff, and uh, it turns out that they're plans are to put Crash Bandicoot into Skylanders, which is obviously uh, a letdown. I would have loved a new Crash Bandicoot game. That would have been amazing. I played the first three Crash Bandicoot games as a kid, um, and they're just incredible games, obviously. The, you know, it used to be Sony's mascot. It was just a groundbreaking uh, transition from 2D side-scrollers to this now, you know, obviously still a platforming game, but from different perspectives and aspects. And it was just an awesome, amazing game with a, an, an, an inv amazing uh, environment and um, just an art component that was really, really uh, attractive to me as a gamer and as a kid. So you know a you know if you if they brought a new game to the table for the ps4 that was you know with these uh, amazing new graphics that we have you know that would be so sick but unfortunately we're getting the skylanders adaptation we all know what skylanders did to spyro um so there's that the good news is that they're actually remastering the first three crash bandicoot games which is amazing because those were obviously the best ones you know they obviously had crash bandicoot games from other developers on the ps2 and maybe even the ps3 i'm not entirely sure uh, but overall the first three were obviously the best you know the naughty dog games those were the prime of crash bandicoot and the best uh, crash bandicoot experiences so to hear that they are remastering those is almost as good as getting a brand new game because you know with a new game we don't know if it'll be good uh but with the remasters at least we can relive that experience from however many years ago is like 15 years ago or maybe it was seven i don't even know but it was a long ass time ago so the fact that we get that is amazing. Uh, next, we can talk about Battlefield 1. I know Battlefield 1 has been buzzing the past few days. I think they've released potentially the multiplayer trailer or some sort of live action trailer. I know T. Martin talked about it on his channel. Um, they did show a little bit of pre-beta, pre-alpha, some sort of multiplayer experience, 64 player maps, which is absolutely crazy. Um, this was really cool. Some of the guns look cool. Some of the aspects of the movement and everything just looks really awesome. 
uh, I'm going to say this again, and I've, I've mentioned this before, um, Call of Duty players who are really excited for Battlefield 1, I think are, are probably going to be let down. Uh, the game is not going to be like Call of Duty. It, just watching these trailers, it just looks like Battlefield to me. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a Battlefield game. It, it that's, that's what it is, you know? So, um, it's gonna play like all the other battlefield games you know the massive maps and, and and the maybe high recoil weapons and things like that you know this is not gonna be anything like a call of duty game um it might be the setting that we want from call of duty but it's not gonna be a call of duty game so you know i don't think uh you know all these cod fanboys hopping on the bandwagon i think they're probably gonna be let down a little bit because it's gonna be a slower paced game than call of duty uh and i don't think that it's going to retain their uh their attention span um so yeah the game looks amazing for a battlefield game but it is a battlefield game so we're gonna have to you know see what uh, the, rest, the rest of that is you know I, I signed up for the beta so i'm excited for that i don't know when that's actually happening uh, happening they probably announced it i just don't know exactly when the beta is coming um but i did sign up for it so i'm excited to play it again i don't know what else to expect other than the fact that it looks very battlefield-esque because that's what it is uh and the setting is awesome but the game is ultimately gonna play just like any other battlefield so coming from Bethesda, we got Elder Scrolls Legends, which looks like their version of Hearthstone or some sort of card game. I didn't actually watch the full trailer for that, uh, mainly because I'm not entirely interested in it. Um, card games are amazing. Uh, I'm really into, you know, all sorts of different card games and things like that. Lately, I've been kind of into um, Hearthstone. It's a really awesome game, but I've kind of been shying away from it because I do realize that you need to actually buy packs at some point in order to continue to have fun with the game, and I'm not really at that point where I'm ready to spend money on it maybe when I have uh, you know less games to play and that's you know something that takes my focus then maybe I'll do it but you know right now that's really the only card game that I've kind of been into lately um, Yu-Gi-Oh I'm a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan I haven't played that in maybe a year year and a half two years something like that I haven't really like been into it um, so yeah i'm a huge card game fan but right now i'm just not really in that genre at the moment you know i kind of jump from genre to genre sometimes i'm really into shooters sometimes i'm into rpgs and sometimes it's card games and you know things like that so right now i'm really not interested in any card games but it looks like bethesda is trying to get into that market maybe uh steal a little bit of blizzard's player base and the people that prefer elder scrolls over you know things like world of warcraft you know things like that i think uh maybe it'll be good who knows i don't know if there's that much room left in the player the trading card game markets um <clears throat> because obviously magic gathering is is massive and people love it and they obviously have their adaptations of the virtual game uh and then you have hearthstone which is just a massive success and people love that game as well uh so i don't know if there's going to be room for a third giant in that scene um and i could be forgetting some other games honestly i'm not that into it right now but yeah we'll see who knows i don't predict it being very successful but maybe they prove me wrong who knows and maybe i'll be into it when it comes out but that's one major thing from bethesda i was really hoping for a new elder scrolls game um i'm just ah i need like skyrim was so long ago you know skyrim i, ca I can't believe how long ago skyrim came out i think that was 2011 maybe yeah, November of 2011 is when Skyrim dropped, and then the Legendary Edition came out in 2013, so we haven't seen a Skyrim game in like five years, or not a Skyrim game, but an Elder Scrolls game, and I loved Skyrim, just like absolutely crazy um and i loved oblivion so much uh and actually this past winter i played through skyrim again uh on my pc on my new computer with like updated graphics and everything and it was just an incredible game um so i was really hoping for a new elder scrolls because it's been a very long time since they put out one uh <clears throat> and i'm kind of tired of skyrim to be completely honest with you you know i'm not really into it you know it's a very it's a very wintry game it's very dark and gray uh, and there obviously are you know places in the game that aren't like that but in general it is a very dark gray game um so yeah i mean i'm kind of tired of skyrim so i wanted a new elder scrolls but we aren't getting one yet I really hope it's sooner than later because, you know, some people are saying that we're still three years away from a new Elder Scrolls game and I don't want to wait that long. I cannot imagine having to wait that long for a new Elder Scrolls. Like, I need, I feel like a, like a drug addict who just needs his fix. Um, they did announce that they are remastering Skyrim for the next-gen consoles or for the current-gen consoles, whatever you want to call them, um, which, <clears throat> again, I'm not that excited over. If you play on PC, I really don't see any reason to purchase the remaster um, unless there's added content or something besides just the updated graphics and, and you know maybe bug fixes or something 
I don't see a real reason to buy it uh, because everything in the trailer is stuff that you can already get on the PC version through mods. The modding community for Skyrim is incredible. Uh, so, you know, like the god lighting and, uh, you know, the snow, uh, the snow shaders and the water textures and all this stuff, you can update all of that for free through mods on PC. So if you want to play Skyrim Remastered early, get a good PC and download all these mods. That's really what it is. So there's no chance that I'm going to be buying the remastered version. Uh, again, if you don't have a good PC or you prefer console gaming, absolutely, like for sure, you know, playing uh, playing Skyrim on my PC with all the updated graphics was a whole different experience. You know, playing if you go back and play Skyrim on the PS3 right now, you're going to be blown away at how shit the game looks. Like, I forgot how garbage it looked on the old consoles, and, and it's just it's it's just complete shit. So, uh, I would say if you are a console person and you like Skyrim, definitely get the updated version. It'll be a very immersive experience. You're going to love it. You're going to love the world that looks much better. But if you play on PC, again, no real reason to buy it unless they... Uh, somehow release like maybe a new expansion with it or something along those lines um, again I'm kind of tired of Skyrim it's a great game I'll probably play it again before the next Elder Scrolls comes out but overall I was really hoping for a new Elder Scrolls and it doesn't look like we're gonna get that I think they announced a few Fallout 4 DLCs and I've only played a little bit of Fallout 4 um, Fallout the the series is very weird for me because I love the Fallout series um, and you know I love it not nearly as much as Elder Scrolls but it is a great series especially Fallout 3 and I haven't really gotten into Fallout 4 and it's because if like there's a very the the game feels a certain way <laughs> if that's if that makes any sense and it seems very depressing to me the game in, in, in itself you know the game is a very depressing game you know everything it, like humanity is wiped out and there's all sorts of mutants and there's just sickness and, and poverty and the game is just very depressing and I just I need to be in a certain like mood to actually get into it and really play it so I haven't played it that much I know that people love the game though so those DLCs hopefully you know that that makes the player base even stronger and hopefully you guys enjoy that and maybe someday I'll continue playing Fallout 4 and really get into it uh, but until then those DLCs don't really mean much to me and I'd rather I'd honestly rather have seen like a Skyrim DLC announced or something I don't know <laughs> Again, uh, virtual reality is something that they touched on, especially for the Xbox. Uh, they were saying that, I guess, uh, they, they announced a new Xbox. It's 40% smaller. It's got the capability of playing 4K video. That's something that I think people are getting confused. They keep saying 4K, 4K. It's only for, like, Netflix and, like, streaming services, I guess. It's not for games. You're not going to be able to play uh, 4K resolution games on the new Xbox um, just based off of the, uh, the graphic processing and everything in there. I can tell you that it's going to be about the same graphic processing as my current computer, uh, which can't play 4K games. It's just not going to happen. So, um, yeah, it, it's not going to be 4K gameplay. It's just going to be, you know, maybe cinematics, perhaps, and maybe, like, just streaming services, like videos and stuff, YouTube. things along those lines um, but it does have that capability it does have a built-in power supply uh, it's a lot quieter I guess and obviously a lot smaller um, and up upgraded hardware and I think the price point is $300 or something which is uh, huge you know if you haven't jumped uh, you know if you're an Xbox 360 fanboy and you haven't jumped on the Xbox one bandwagon wait because this console is gonna be way better than the original Xbox one definitely worth it for the money um, I don't think I'm going to be buying one, obviously, because I have a PS4, and they're, you know, releasing their slim version or their next version of the PS4. I don't know if I'll upgrade to either of those consoles, because, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, but they do have that, and with that upgraded processing power, it enables them to play, um... 1080p 60 frames per second which is awesome you know obviously people want that with their games and this will be able to handle that type of thing with the video processing on top of that the extra processing power is going to help it with whatever virtual reality xbox plans on releasing in the future personally i think it's going to have something to do with the oculus rift because if you don't know the oculus actually comes with an xbox one controller uh, so i imagine that they're going to have some sort of collaboration there at some point maybe the oculus will work with an xbox uh, one or xbox one games or something like that who knows um so yeah more virtual reality talk more uh slim consoles you know um and i don't i don't really care about any of that stuff again uh so yeah there's that
obviously gears of war the next gears of war is coming out and there is uh what is the other game that they're no halo wars 2 that's another thing so if you were an xbox fan those are probably two things that you want to pick up um i would like to play the new gears again i don't have an xbox one so i'm not going to go buy it for the next gears um but that does look pretty cool um and then i want to talk about nintendo for a little bit uh, a lot of people are you know obviously like i said at the beginning of the video currently i'm actually missing the nintendo conference because i'm recording this video but i already suspect that i'm i know what they're really going to talk about um sun and moon is going to be a huge thing they actually already started talking about that as i was watching a couple of minutes ago um so sun and moon is huge obviously i've been excited for sun and moon before e3 even announced you know whatever they're announcing today uh sun and moon is going to be awesome their new the new pokemon games uh, are going to be set in a hawaii type region it's going to be tropical and things like that um and it, the game just looks awesome so i'm really excited to play that on my 3ds and um the other thing is going to be zelda i'm sure they're going to be talking about zelda coming out in 2017 i haven't seen any footage or really read anything about it but naturally i am excited for it anytime a zelda game is announced or released it, it is a huge deal to me i'm very uh, into the into the series i love zelda games they are incredible and some of my favorite games of all time so obviously i'm super hyped for zelda and overall uh, you know just about the entire conference in general not just nintendo um there's not that many things that i'm really excited about again like i said i'm not interested in upgrading my console i'm not interested in virtual reality there was no elder scrolls game announced there was no a new one you know obviously skyrim mastered might be uh you know awesome for players who didn't get to play skyrim or you know maybe uh haven't played it since the 2011 release so that's cool for some people, not for me. Um, Crash Bandicoot Remastered, that's really cool. I'll probably pick that up or at least play it. Uh, again, Battlefield 1, I'm waiting for the beta to be hyped about that. So really, the only the only company that really blew me away here uh, is Nintendo, and it was with things that I already knew were coming. You know, I already knew about Pokemon, I already knew about Zelda. So there wasn't that much to get excited about for me. Um, you know, obviously, I am a very specific person who only cares about a few things. Um, so for a lot of people, this conference was incredible. Uh, I think both, in general, both Microsoft and uh, Sony did really, really well. All the uh, developers and companies presented a lot of really cool things coming to the video game space and video game market for 2016 and 2017. So there's a lot to be excited about for most people. Personally, I didn't, there was nothing here that really hyped me up. Again, like I said, besides the new Pokemon and Zelda games, um, so that's pretty much it guys so hopefully you enjoyed my little opinion video and if you haven't seen anything come out of e3 yet maybe i informed you a little bit about some things that you didn't know about um i highly doubt that because everybody's posting e3 videos at this time but either way hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure you smack that like button i'd really appreciate that subscribe to my channel if you are new around here for more videos like this one and comment down below telling me what you're most excited about that was announced at e3 and if you do i'll know you made it all the way to the end of the video and you are the true mvp you're the real homie i appreciate you and you loyal um <clears throat> and that's pretty much it guys so hopefully you enjoyed and this has been omniarch and i will talk to you guys later peace out